students, my name is Angela. Welcome to another session in biology. Today, we shall learn about organisms, habitat and ecological balance. If we look at a habitat, we find that a number of organisms live in it. An examination of a garden or a field reveals the presence of several different types of organisms in that area. All organisms living here are sharing the resources. In this part, we shall examine the interaction and interdependence between organisms. If we look at a habitat, you will find grass and number of plants. Some insects and animals consume them. The insects are consumed by birds. Plants give oxygen while animals exhale carbon dioxide. Plants need carbon dioxide for photosynthesis while animals need oxygen to live. No organism in the nature can survive alone. There is a basic concept of interaction and interdependence between the organisms living in a habitat. The interaction between organisms in a habitat is of two types. They are intraspecific interaction and interspecific interaction. In a habitat, we find different organisms of different species. There are several members of the same species. All members of the same species have to share land, water, food and mates that are available in the habitat. This results in competition between members of the same species. You can understand the concept in your house by conducting a small experiment. Take a flower pot. Fill it with soil from the garden. Sow 10 seeds of mustard. Water the soil regularly. Observe after few days. You will find sprouting. Count them. You will find less than 10. Observe after few more days. The plants start growing. Observe when they are fully grown. Count them. You will find less than 5 well grown plants. What do you understand from this experiment? This experiment demonstrates the interaction between the members of the same species that is intraspecific interaction. Not all seeds sown survived. There was a competition for water, land and food. Only those who could withstand in the struggle for existence survived. This experiment proved that only the seed which had more favorable traits for survival germinated. Over generations, all unfavorable traits could be eliminated and only the ones with favorable traits exist and survive. This is the principle of survival of fittest and an important event of evolution. It controls the size of population of a given species. It allows selection of better and deserving members of the species to survive while the weaker ones are eliminated. The members selected in the competition pass on these characters to their offsprings of the next generation. In the process of interaction, some species have developed the unique features of division of labor. They live in groups. If we examine a beehive, we find that the worker bees are responsible to collect food. For taking care of the hive, queen bees increase the number of bees in the colony by laying eggs. The relationship between the organisms of different species in a habitat is interspecific interaction. 
If the needs of different species are different, then there is very little competition between them. However, if the needs are common, for example, food, then there is competition. The needs of birds are different from cattle. Hence, there is no interspecific struggle. However, different species like cows, buffaloes, goats and horses which live in the same habitat and their needs being similar, there is competition for food between them. The other type of interaction is the predator and prey. Predator hunts and kills the prey. All predators are carnivores while the prey generally is a herbivore. The lion is a carnivore. It is a predator. If in a forest there are many lions but the other animals or the number of prey is small, not all lions get sufficient food as the number of prey is small. Some lions die. The reduction in the number of predators reduces, then the number of prey increases. Thus, over a period of time, a balance between the number of predators and prey is established. Dear students, the interaction and interdependence of organisms in a habitat is maintained by nature. An artificial disturbance to the habitat by man results in upsetting the balance. Man should respect the nature's balance and allow other organisms to live and share the wealth of this planet.